This is the session about the Red Hat Open Source Arcade. Um, hopefully you guys are interested in learning some about games. I guess you are if you're here, so welcome. Um, I'm going to just, I'll, it's, a, it's a short talk, so it's gonna be, I'll speed through it really fast, but I'll leave time for questions at the end. Um, all right, so how did, I'm gonna just start at the beginning. Like how did the, this open source arcade idea come about? And it started in around 2017 where uh, we had um, an idea for our booth at Summit <clears throat> where we wanted to like have, have a, something fun to draw people in to learn and also maybe learn a little bit about the customer portal. I was working on the customer portal team at the time and I still am today. And uh, hey, <laughs> come on in, what's space? Um, and uh, so we came up with this idea for this game with a, uh, a leap controller right here. There's a little, like it's a little IR controller. It's a hand sensor. And you basically wave your hand across, the, uh, across it there. And it moves this little portal on the bottom of the screen back and forth with your hand. So it just tracks your hand. Um, and you try to catch the little stuff coming down from the top into the little portal. And you gain points. So. We call it Customer Portal Engage. I don't know if you recognize that, if anyone know, recognize Marco Bell-Peter, but that's, that's Marco and Jim Moran. Um, and so it got, uh, it, it was like super, super fun. A lot of, tons of people played it, they loved it. Um, and then, uh, Dan, so there was a few people there. At that summit was like the first big one where the Command Line Heroes podcast was just getting launched. And they had like a command line heroes um, coffee and code and coffee thing. And they were like, uh, one of the main creators of that, his name was Dan Corsi. And he was like, man, it would be so cool if we could do something more with this, with this game idea for games um, for our podcast too. So um, that's when this came about. So we... Dan was like, let's go big with this. Like, let's make it really cool. So he, um, this was uh, back when budgets were a lot larger. He's like, let's make five arcade cabinets and just, and, and fill them with all the hardware you need. I'm like, sweet. So we, so we worked with a, um, a custom arcade building cabinet company in Raleigh, um, came up with the designs and, uh, and the branding and everything. And, also, we, it, unlike traditional arcade cabinets with uh, joysticks and mouse and, I'm sorry, like buttons like a, like a regular old school arcade cabinet, this were, these were modified for a keyboard and mouse, which makes the, you know, the possibility of games that you can play on it a lot larger because you're not limited by just two button controls, pretty much. Um, and all the games that we had already were kind of based around keyboard and mouse. So, so we produced these things, and um, that was me and uh, my my partner in crime. His name is Michael Clayton. Um, we we built these together, and then the their launch was in in Summit 2018, and we um, and they were obviously going to be at the Command and Heroes area, um, and we're like, what could we how could we make a game? that is like command line related, but also that anyone could come up and know how to play it in like five seconds. And then also have a fun experience in about one minute and then leave. Like that was kind of like, how, you, how would we even do that? Like there's not a lot of options for that. So um, we're like, what if we just make a memory game of Linux commands? like as fast as you can, like how many Linux commands can you enter in, in one minute and then put it as, and then put the score up on the screen. And then we added some like, uh, some memory challenge for anyone who doesn't know about like what, like Linux commands where they can just look at it and then memorize it and then still get a good score and compete with other people. So surprisingly, that was like a lot of people liked it. People loved it. So, um, here are some action shots of since then. Uh, oh, and, and also, before I go there, we also added 
other games that Michael Clayton and I have made as well as, um, uh, and they were not Red Hat related. They were just games we made for fun for game jams like Ludum Dare and stuff. Um, and then we also put some games on there from an open, um, an open source game jam that we host called Open Jam, which is just, a, a game, if anyone's familiar with game jams, they're just short little events where you build a, a game based on a theme in a short time frame. And we had Open Jam, so there's an Open Jam game on there. So we had a little suite of games. But then, then we started taking them to events. And so this was, a couple, this was a summit, I can't remember what year, but these were three different summits. Actually, this one is from IBM Think. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, people loved it. Like, and we have like, um, I guess, leaderboard contests or for swag and stuff. Um, and the cabinets were a lot of fun. So, so then the pandemic hit and no more events, no more live events, right? <laughs> so now we're like, oh crap, well the cabinets, they all went into storage, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, like in a dusty cardboard box in the <laughs> warehouse somewhere, <laughs> just sitting there collecting dust in there. But the events team still wanted to have like interactive like games for people to play when we were all doing virtual events, which is like, those were dark times. Like the, uh, I don't know if you, you if we, we, so they're like, let's make a virtual arcade for the online events, like the pandemic era events. And so this was, this was the beginning of, of that. This is a screenshot from, I can't remember, it was probably like KubeCon or something. I know we had this at KubeCon virtual and a bunch of different virtual events. Had a, kind of like the same setup of games with a couple of different Open Jam games. Um, and so we did that until the pandemic ended. And uh, after we, since we, had the, since we had the virtual stuff all set up, we're like, well, let's just take those games and put them on and like host them on our own domain, our own Red Hat domain. So instead of just having it like tied to a specific virtual event, let's just make it our own domain, which is on all the time. And that's how we, that's how Red Hat, um, arcade.red.com was born. So now we have arcade.red.com. And um, so that's how kind of like the backstory of it. Why did we do it? Like there's, there's a, a, a couple of reasons. Um, one of the reasons is to support and promote open source in, in game development, open source game development tools, open source games. Also to like support our culture, our Red Hat culture of just having like, you know, doing fun projects with each other. Um, they've been uh, part of We Are Red Hat Week a few times. Um, and, uh, and, and also um, just to let, yeah, I think those are the main reasons why we, why we did the, the arcade. Um, oh, and, and also we did a few like, uh, Twitch streams with the open shift, um, open shift TV, uh, guys uh, about how to do multiplayer game development on open shift. Um, and so we did a couple of, uh, episodes about that related to arcade too. So, um, I think what I want to do now is. Uh, and then I'll open up for questions, but I just wanted to soup, do a super quick overview. The, the internet is not, the Wi-Fi is pretty saturated right now, so the games aren't loading very fast, but I did want to just talk a little bit about each one and how they were made. <clears throat> Mo all of them, of course, are HTML5. They all run in a browser, no plugins. You don't have to download or install anything. They're just, they're browser-based games, so you don't, so they're super easy. You just click play and, and they play. So most of them are, are web-based um, engines like Stonehold and <clears throat> Pity About Earth are built in Phaser, Phaser JS. if you ever used, heard that before, but it's a JavaScript game engine. Um, this one, Command Line Heroes Bash, is, uh, it's WebGL, so it's written in 3JS. There's other, some other WebGL-based games um, these two down here at the bottom are actual, actually multiplayer games with a back, with a back end, Zorbio and Square Off. Those are written in uh, 3JS with Node.js backend. Thank you. And um, 
anyone that has multiplayer has got, uh, uh, like, probably Node.js in the back end. And then the, uh, oh, this was the other reason for the arcade. There have been many, like, demos and other, because we're obviously not the only people making games at Red Hat. There's other teams. I don't know if you've ever seen any of Burr Sutter's keynotes at Summit, but he likes to include games in those. And this was a game from one of his big Summit keynotes called Ship Wars. And when it was over, we're like, let's not let that game die. Let's put it on the arcade. So, <clears throat> so it's playable there now too. So um, I think that that is pretty much it. Oh, the last thing I'll say is you can play the games here. Go check them out. Just walk straight through there. Um, we don't have the nice fancy arcade cabinet like we do at Summit because <laughs> those are hard to ship ship over here. But um, but yeah, they're on just on a standing desk and they're open to play all of them if you want to go play and get a high score on on Bash. Uh, but anyway, that's it. So questions. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, on the scale from one to five, oh, are we satisfied with the service we built by the team that provides the British cluster which has Bartok? Five? Thank oh, yeah, five. Oh, totally. Like, that's never been an issue. So the, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. So he's asking, are we satisfied with the, uh, with the platform that they're providing for us to host arcade.reda.com? which I think I put a link to it in, it's, there's a link to it here, it's called um, OSCI, uh, if that will actually load, there we go, yeah. So it's open source community infrastructure. They've been, you guys have been super like generous to give us this without like, and like we haven't had to come like pay anything for it, it's just like because it's kind of a community based project, um, this we fall under this and it's, it gives us this infrastructure to use and it's super nice and we're super grateful for it so definitely a five there yeah any other questions um do i have oh yeah go ahead yeah I think, <clears throat> oh yeah, so I think he's, uh, so he's asking, uh, yeah, for the recording, um, what's my take on older game, like really old games becoming open source in the community? And I think, I think it's a great way of like preserving those games. Like they don't die. Like it's really sad when like someone, cause games are so hard to make and they're an art really like, and it's a tragedy well, that might be a strong word, but it's it's sad if they just disappear and are never heard of again, you know, like that all that work that went into it, you know, they should be they should be kept up, you know, kept alive. It's part of history. So and open source is one of the a really great way of doing that, because then the vol volunteers who who love it can keep it alive. I think that's I, w I, I would hope that more game developers would open source their games when they retire them so they don't just go into obscurity, you know? Like, open it up. Like, you're not making any money on it or anything, and you're not selling it anymore. Like, any, there's no reason not to just open it, I think. So, yeah, great question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, if there's no other question I, I, I wanted to show, because I do have, like, 30 seconds left. Um, one one little fun piece of trivia um when rel 8 was re uh was released at summit a few years ago well this one was several years ago because rel 8 this was, this was like the trailer for for rel 8 um the the video team production team at red hat actually um used some of the games from the arcade in the in the video like that's that's one of the <laughs> that's one of the games from the arcade uh, and they just are like, let's have guys in a in a game room playing games and like make it part of it. We made that little heart thingy, but um, 
anyway, I, I thought that was cool. When I saw they, when, they, when they were presenting that on the stage, I was like, oh my gosh, there's our game up there. So that was pretty fun. Um, just a little bit of trivia. Anyway, thank you. <laughs>